When it comes to your website, you have two different groups of users who can access it. There are back-end users, those who can access the content management system and make edits, and front-end users, the end user who is going to see your website who might have to have some access to different levels of content. To manage the users who have back-end access to your website, you're going to go under Users and Groups. If you need to add a user, you select Users. This will show you a list of the current users allowed access to your backend. You can edit the username and password by clicking the edit link, or you can add a new user. Here you'll fill out the user's information, the username, the password, you re-enter the password, you have the option to fill out their first and last name, and to put in an email address in case they lose their password and need to have it sent to them. You can set this user as active, or you can later deactivate the user. And here's where you select the groups that they belong to. Currently the groups are admin, editor, and designer. Each group has a different level of permission, so make sure that you want the person to access the particular elements of the website when you assign them a group. So we'll make this an admin user. That means that they can do anything on the back end that they need to, including mess with templates, design, and code. Now we hit submit, and our new user guest is created. If you'd like to add different groups with different levels of access and permission, you can do so under Users and Groups, Groups. You have the three default groups that your content management system comes with, and to add a new group, you just click the Add New Group button and select the group's name. You can deactivate a particular group from being able to access the content management system. Here you can edit a group, view the group assignment, which basically shows you which users are assigned to this group, and edit the, the group's permissions. Clicking the permissions and group assign links will also take you to the same place as the group assignments and group permissions link. You have the option to assign group permissions to all groups, where you can see what all of the groups are allowed access to at the same time. Or you can use the drop down to select a particular group that you want to change the permissions for. The admin group by default cannot have its permissions altered because the admin has access to all areas of the, of the content. But certain groups only have permission to do certain things. By ticking or unticking a box, you give the user access to a different area of your website. Once you're satisfied with the changes that you've made, you can either submit or cancel. In order to manage the access to front-end users, you go to Users and Groups, Front-end User Management. Here you'll see a lot of tabs, but the primary ones that you need to worry about are User Properties, Groups, and Users. You can use the other tabs to change templates and preferences. Now in order to add a user, first you have to have a group, but before you have a group, first you have to have properties. Usually, your first group and your properties will already be set up. But if you've installed this module yourself, you'll be, ha you'll have, you'll be starting from scratch. You want to add a property. So now we put in the property name. You don't want to use any spaces in the name. But the content management system will automatically remove all spaces and replace them with dashes for you. So the name we'll say is first name. That's going to be the name of this property. The prompt, which is what tells people what they need to enter, We'll the say type of field is name. text. The length is the width of the input, and that's 80. The maximum length is 255 characters. We do not want to force the value to be unique, and we do not need to store this data encrypted in the database. That's just for sensitive information. Now that you have a property, you can add a group. So we'll name the group Guest. And the description will be These are Guests. The description is just for you to know what this group is for. Now for this field, you want to set your field status to on if it's a required field that someone will need to fill out when they're becoming a member of this group. So you can either make it optional, required, hidden, or read only. So we'll make it an optional field. And the ask and lost username, you can tick this if someone is trying to request their username. If they need to fill this out, you would say that you want that to be ask in the lost username. So now we're going to submit our new group. And now that you have a group, you can add a user. So we're going to scroll down 
to the Add User button, and you'll fill in their email address, passwords, and the date that their membership expires. Now, you need to add this person to a group, so you're going to add them to your guest group. And now we'll be prompted to fill in the first name field. Hit Submit. And now you've added a user to the group guest. This means that if you have some hidden content on your website for which membership in the group guest is required, this user can now use their username and password to access it. If you'd like to view the user's history and see what they've been accessing, how long they've been logged in, and when they've been logged in, you can hit the History button. You can also edit this user using the Edit key or delete the user. To submit bulk actions, you can select all and delete selected.